Hey, Kaiser here. Thanks for clicking on this video. If you're new, please hit the subscribe and notification button because in this channel, I talk a lot about gears and gadgets that you will need in your next travel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the DJI MIMO app that pairs perfectly with the DJI Osmos Mobile 3 and even DJI uh, Osmos uh, Pocket. But this specific one that I'm demoing today would be for the DJI Osmos Mobile 3. I have done another video for the DJI Osmos Mobile 3. I'll link up above to see the video for that one. Uh, but in this uh, video, I'm getting right into the DJI MIMO app. Let's get right into it. Alright guys, we have the DJI MIMO uh, on my screen right now. Let's get right into it. Uh, when you launch the app, it, it automatically detects the Osmos Mobile 3 if it's connected to your Bluetooth. Uh, it always presents you with some helpful tips as well. Right now it's suggesting if I use a tripod, it will help me with some better shots. I already have this tripod mounted onto my uh, uh, DJI Osmos Mobile 3, so that's not a problem. I'm going to click OK. So uh, it immediately launches in. Uh, just to give you a quick uh, overview of the home page, on the home page you will see you have the camera button on the top left and a book on the top right. The book basically presents you with all the tutorials you will need to know for your DJI Osmo Mobile 3. So very helpful videos. I highly recommend you checking them all out. Going back to the home screen, you have a couple other videos that are related to the Osmos Pocket, Osmos Action and even Osmos Mobile 3. And at the bottom you have the home screen, all your videos and even your account information. If we go back and cl click on the camera button, it'll take you right into the app uh, where you can use it for your recordings. Right now it's in portrait mode. I'm going to switch into my landscape mode for, pic for taking pictures and videos. So I'm adjusting the gimbal right now to make it centered. I'm focusing on some of the toys I bought from my little cousins. All right, I'm going to go through all the settings and modes that you see in the MIMO app in front of you on my screen. Uh, I'll first talk what's on the right hand side, all the uh, shooting modes that you uh, MIMO app gives you. And then on the left hand side are pretty much all your gimbal settings and configuration that you want to have. So we're going quickly. All the way in the top is the story mode. Uh, and I will talk more about that later on. We have pano, we have photo, we have video. Uh, then we also have uh, slow motion, time lapse, and hyperlapse. Now, one of the good thing I like about the MIMO app and even the Osmos Mobile 3 is that if your phone is not properly balanced, it will actually tell you. Like you can see on my screen right now, it is telling me that the phone is unbalanced and you need to adjust it a little bit. So if you if you have uh, concerns that your phone is not perfectly balanced, just adjusting it slightly uh, and making sure that it is in the center, you will be able to make sure that your phone is perfectly balanced and then the message will go away by itself. All right, as I said before, on your left hand side of your screen are all the settings for the Osmos Mobile 3. If you click on the top home button, it'll take you back to the Osmos Mobile home screen. What you see on the right hand side is the battery life of the gimbal, the battery life of your phone, if the flash is on and off, and the direction of the gimbal movie. Uh, right underneath it is the auto function which uh, in, you, you can toggle between manual and auto. Manual is available if you guys are uh, have more experience in shooting uh, professional photos. You know how to change your ISO settings and your shutter speed. This is where you will be able to do that with this uh, app. Going below is the resolution. Uh, with this app you are able to get up to 4K and 60 frames per second. You can even do your 1080p recording in 24, 30 and 60 seconds. Uh, and uh, you also have the 720p uh, resolution as well. I'm leaving mine uh, typically at 4K and 60 frames per second. Uh, right below is the glamour effect. Now the glamour effect is only enabled if your 
not in 4K. So if I toggle this back to 1080p uh, and 30 frames per second, then you can enable the glamour effect. And this is basically a, some form of a filter, uh, an enhancement that the app allows you to uh, change the this uh, the way the object or the person in front of you looks like to give it a little bit more uh, enhancement and a, and a more appealing look. So I'm gonna turn this off for now as we will go off into other settings. Now the, one of the most important settings that you will find will be in this three dots at the bottom. So when you click on the three dots, this will give you all the controls and settings that you will need for your gimbal. Starting from the top, you can actually choose to change the proper follow mode that you want. If you're used to other gimbals where you can change your pan follow, follow uh, and other modes, this is where you kind of get that. So if you choose follow, you would be able to move the gimbal in the direction that you want it to follow you. If you don't want it to tilt, so it will be locked in the tilt lock mode. And you also have your FPV mode, which will uh, help you to move freely and smoothly. And lastly, the spin shot actually is a very similar mode to the vortex mode where you can have the phone spin in sort of a circular motion to get some cool effects. Underneath it is the sports mode and if you turn this on, uh, the sports mode is enabled and you can take some fast moving shots. This is very helpful when you're taking some uh, shots of kids playing or if you are at a sports game and you're taking some sports videos or if you're, it's a fast action based or a racing game, all those heavy and fast moving uh, scenes you want to capture, the sports mode is very helpful in that. The zoom speed feature is an extremely helpful uh, uh, setting that Osmos Mimo provides you uh, and this is with the zoom that I have uh, on the phone. If your phone supports higher zoom then you will be able to have even more higher zoom right in the iPhone 11 Pro Max it goes up to a certain uh, iPhone 11 Pro Max it goes up to a certain zoom so in this case if you want a wide zoom it can switch to wide zoom if you want to go back to the standard 1x it goes back to standard 1x and but if you want to go further and really zoom in smoothly this is what that feature allows you to do and tapping it back and bring it back and if you want to change the speed of the zoom you can just put it uh, to fast and you'll see how different it becomes it will really zoom in very quickly and even pull out very quickly. Uh, this is really good in my opinion if you are shooting something really fast and you want to get those quick zoom in and out but I tend to keep it in slow so that I can have that nice cinematic look of zooming in and zooming out. Alright, the next setting is the control speed stick speed. Now this is if you want to uh, move the gimbal slow from side to side or even tilt. So really to control your pan movements and your tilt movements. And if you want to make it fast, you can change it to fast or medium. And you will see that this will move very quickly with that setting on. So if, keep in mind how you want to do your pan and tilt. Uh, I personally prefer to keep it under slow so that I can really get that cinematic lifts for your tilt moves and your pan moves. The next one is the control stick control direction. I have it on free. You can even choose your, and this is for the joystick that's in the front. Uh, you can have it to be free or you can have it to move up and down or left to right if that is what you really prefer. But if uh, leaving on free, you can even move a little bit towards the diagonal. So that's kind of helpful. So I let it be to free. So that's what that feature does. You can even have invert pan control and invert tilt control. This is when if you want to have an opposite direction, if you have the pan control on, if you go to your left, it will go to your, the gimbal will move to the right. If you turn it off, uh, then you can freely move. If you want, if you have your tilt control on, then if you move your joystick down, it will move up. And if you move up, the joystick will move down. Uh, if this is what you're comfortable with, then this is something that where you can even switch it uh, in this uh, setting here. Uh, the press M button is for the multi-function button. It allows you two options where you can go from switch photo to recording or just presenting you with quick menu. If I leave it uh, to quick menu and double tap on the menu, uh, it will bring up the menu. 
I like leaving it to switching from photo to recording mode. Uh, the gimbal auto calibrate, this is a helpful feature if you feel like your gimbal is not properly optimized or you need to correct the gimbal while balancing, you can click on calibrate and it will help you calibrate the gimbal for you. And you can also, lastly, you can also adjust the horizontal gimbal adjustment. But this is to fine tune your gimbal positioning and how you, how you want the motors to work for you. Uh, so you have that precise adjustment uh, in this setting as well. So I'm not going to do anything of that because I know my gimbal is properly uh, adjusted at the moment so uh, let's go uh, back to uh, auto mode here because I usually record in auto unless until I know I want to uh, specify a certain uh, manual setting uh, if I go back into pano mode then uh, I get a couple of options here on the left hand side uh, if you click on the 180 a symbol here you get the two options you can either do three by three where the gimbal will take three pictures from the top three pictures in the middle and three pictures from the bottom and st stitch it all right up I'm, I'll show you the demo right now and you'll see what it exactly does So that's what how a 3x3 three three, uh, panel picture looks like and if I choose the 180 uh, mode here and record the gimbal will move by itself and take a panoramic shot from left to right and that's how the picture would look all right and going and that's all there is in that setting if you go into photos you're able to take your photos here you can do your adjustments manual and you can even time or do your glamour shots it's very simple and straightforward there you do get an, a little bit of an idea of what the iso levels are and what the shutter speed is as well uh, but if you want to have more control you can choose auto and switch it back to manual and you will be able to change your settings over here to uh, your iso settings how you like for precise picture adjustments i will go i'll leave it for auto for now and then in your video, like I uh, talked about before, you have your resolutions that you can change. You can go into your proper video mode. You can have your grids as well, and you can record exactly how you want to record. Uh, slow motion is a very helpful feature that I like uh, that, the, that the app provides uh, because with the stock app on the phone, it always records a, a normal scene for a couple of seconds, and then it starts as slow motion. Of course, you can adjust that in your post edit, but what I like about in this uh, app is that you can start recording slow right off. So I'm going to adjust my app to the right and hit the record button and show you the slow motion that it allows you to take. As I'm panning across, I'm going to stop that, reset, and then to go into the videos here and show you the smooth movement that it will provide you so this is really helpful if you really want to get some cinematic shots so slow movements and slow uh, capture this slow motion feature is very helpful for right out of this app all right let's get back into the app uh, below is the time lapse app so now time lapse app is very helpful if you want to keep your uh, gimbal stationary in one location and change your settings on the top to how long you want to record it so right now it's set to five seconds if you want to change it to longer you can do so over here and how long the duration should be uh, and even the path of how the gimbal should move you can do your motion lapse and set the maximum of four points and the gimbal will move staying at one stationary position. It can start from one end, go up to the top, come back down, go in however direction that you prefer. And that would be the time lapse. I will show you a demo uh, right now. The next uh, mode is the hyperlapse. Now hyperlapse is great if you don't want your gimbal to be stationary and you want to move the gimbal on a certain path while it captures the time lapse 
uh, in the scene. So you can be moving, your gimbal can be moving and you will have a very nice time-lapse scene going on. And it's a very cool effect that to show in videos. Uh, I highly recommend it, especially with landscapes. So that's a cool feature to have as well. All right, now I'm gonna show you what the story mode is all about. The, to get to the story mode, there's two ways. Tapping on the S on the top or even clicking going all the way to the end of this mode and you'll see story there. And what DJI MIMO app gives you are templates of pre-transitions uh, pre that you could call it. There are a lot of templates here. And if you click on any one of them and start, you, you can uh, start recording exactly the way that app has already been pre-altered or pre-set for you. So I'm gonna go back to the story mode and choose something like, say, inspiring. And if, if I choose inspiring, you can even see a video tutorial how the video would probably come out. And what basically happens is that the DJI MIMO app allows you to take four different videos and it'll stitch it together presenting in a nicely edited type of video that you would typically do in a post edit. Uh, this one, this way, it, this eliminates a lot of time, especially when you're traveling and you want to take some very cool videos of different scenes in different locations and get, having the app stitch it for you really quickly and you will be able to share in within seconds. So the first, just to go back in here, you can see the four intervals that you see here. It gives you about a 5.3 seconds, a 5.4 seconds, another 5.3 seconds, and then lastly a 4.6 seconds. To show you a quick demo here, I'm gonna just move this thing around the room uh, and you'll see how quickly it does the job. So that was one scene. And I'm gonna click next. And whenever you're ready to start, you will press the record button. I'm good. This allows you to review and then the next. Looks good. And I'm going to go to the final one, which I will just do a close in. All right, let's preview this. And if you click save, it will create your video and you will be able to share it as soon as it's done. There you go, it's saved. And then you get all the options, how to share it. You have your Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, Instagram, and even in Twitter. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna not bother sharing it and go right back into the app. All right. So there you go guys, that's the DJI MIMO app uh, and it does a lot for you. Uh, it's very user friendly and easy to use with the, with the Osmos Mobile 3. Uh, life can be easier for taking your videos and your uh, on your trivia travel. So I highly recommend this uh, uh, using this app with your DJI Mo Osmos Mobile 3. As I said before, I have made another video on the Osmos Mobile 3. I highly recommend you checking out to see what the mobile gimbal does for you. And uh, if you really liked this video and it was helpful, please uh, hit the like button and please don't forget to hit the subscribe and notification button. I'll be making some more videos that will help you uh, with your next travel. So I'll see you next time. Thank you.